we we're saying that we need to align our strategy with telecoms and make it a bit more like sales of like the SaaS and all the software as a service. Software as a service. Yeah. We can have a VAP video as a product. VAP. Watch this space. Yeah. Right, a couple okay. of years from now, you'll have all heard of it. Yeah, everyone Vap. will be vapping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seen a few people vapping in the car park earlier, actually. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to know about that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that there. Sounds a bit wrong, actually. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Welcome to the Cutting Room Podcast, brought to you by Seven Videos and me, Paul Sherwood. Each week, we'll be cutting through the things that you want to know about video marketing. Seven videos have been going for nearly 10 years now, and over that time we've had many achievements but also learned a lot of things along the way. This podcast is an opportunity for us to share all that knowledge and all that experience with you. Each episode is going to focus on a different topic, concluding with our seven top tips that you can start to put into action in your business. As with all podcasts out there, you know the drill. If you think it's any good, don't forget to give us a follow and keep up to date on when the next episode drops. Hello and welcome to episode 10 of The Cutting Room. I'm Paul Sherwood, one of the founders here at Seven Videos and this week we're going to be talking all about how to create an effective video marketing strategy. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Jake, our producer, and Michael, our client success manager. Chaps, how are we doing today? Good, thank you, really good. How are you, Jake? Yeah, very good, thanks. Um... Relieved after uh, the football results mm. of recent times. I'm sure you don't, don't share it, that. Don't rub it in. Oh, yeah, it's not so good. just for context for the viewers and listeners, Michael is a, a big Leeds fan and Jake is a big Everton fan. So they both had very contradictory last days of the season. Mm, it's disappointing. Um, At least we'll win some more matches though, going down. Well, that was my thinking. I was trying, I was trying to make myself feel better about it, but uh, in the end I didn't have to mm. because thankfully you boys were... A lot worse than we were. Yeah. How are you doing anyway? Cool. Not asked you. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Delighted we're at episode 10 now. So double digits and a little fact for you. We are already in the top 20% of podcasts of all time in terms of the amount of episodes we've done. That's so good going. Wow. Well, what is, why from is a that? little bit of research, there's been between three and four million podcasts. Nice. And only 720,000 of them. I've done more than ten episodes, so oh. we're in the we're in the club, the twenty percent really, club. Don't really there we go. Numbers there as yeah. well. Very proud of that. And another thing I wanted to mention as well before we get into all the good stuff. Uh, looking forward to the next episode already with yourself, Michael and Joe, where we're going to be talking all about um, the impact AI is going to have on video. Yeah, hopefully we've all still got jobs by that point. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I think the downside is obviously these podcast come out a few weeks after we've done it and, and it, it's yeah it's it's sort of going at such a pace that it could all be completely yeah. hopefully they put a hold on it for yeah. a month or so and we'll mm. have to get chat gpt to write it as well yeah yeah see how that goes and we're also in a slightly celebratory mood today yeah. we've worked on a good project with heineken this week hence the little uh, zero, zero. drinks we're treating ourselves Cheers. to a little plug. it is a friday afternoon at time of recording so if this goes out like monday yeah. morning i don't need to think we're all piss heads mm, zero, so. Mm. <laughs> um, so yeah we did a big project with them this week launching their new employer brand uh, for the UK which we're really proud to do yeah it's really good really enjoyed it yeah it was um, it's obviously a great one to be a part of it's probably one of the bigger projects in terms of all the different parties coming together but um, yeah the main thing is we've got, I've had great feedback from it and um, yeah, yeah I mean the video looks great yeah really yeah. good team effort mm. cheers to that cheers cheers yeah Right, so let's get into all the good stuff then. So we're here today to talk about how to create an effective video marketing strategy. So for me, before we get into creating the strategy side of things, the most important thing really is to, when you're creating any plan, to know where you're going. So mm. in relation to, to creating a video marketing strategy, you need to know what your business objectives are, what the business vision is, what the plans are, and where you're looking to get to. Mm. And I guess as a business owner, what would your sort of suggestions be on sort of like the, the points to cover in that in terms of like the strategy? I think for me, it's it's the, in terms of the, the people who will be probably listening to this, they tend to be more within the sort of marketing, sort of director, marketing manager role. It's not necessarily their job to do that, but it's certainly their, it's certainly their job to be aware of what they are. Mm. So certainly if you don't know what, what the vision is within your business, what the objectives are for the year, 
what the main focuses are, then you certainly need to be having those conversations yeah. uh, with those people in the business that do know that. And I guess that could be in terms of sort of numbers, like turnover, profit, that type of thing, but as, as long as like, as well as sort of like sustainability goals, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, I've, I've spoken with market managers in the past where they've, you know, they've been told to go and create a plan for, for this, but mm. they had no other sort of insight or 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 advice or any kind of understanding of what they're trying to do so oh let's go, go and create a marketing plan to generate more leads yeah. and it's like all right we're well, brilliant Based but like on what? what type of leads do we want as a business who are we as a business where are we going as a business are we looking to bring in any new product services and it's really understanding that really rounded approach for any business and what the objectives are that only then when you know what they what that looks like is when you can really start to well, put pen to paper and start putting together um, some strategies and plans around how you're going to get there. Yeah, and I guess we're going through this at the moment, but like understanding what your sort of value proposition is, as well as sort of a really good starting point. Yeah. So again, it, we've we've it's something you should always revisit. We have done it over the years here at Seven, but we've, we've probably fallen slightly by the wayside. So we are revisiting it currently, and that's all about yeah what your value proposition is. So why should anyone do business w- with you? So what 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 is different about us as a business that is going to make clients want to work with us? And I think until we know that, I mean, we've we've got, I think it just needs to be fully agreed throughout the business that everybody knows mm-hmm. what problem you're solving for your audience. Yeah, I think, I think you were probably going to come on to it then, but it's sort of like you alluded to it in that you are, you can always change as well. So you need to always reassess it and always sort of communicate that, especially as sort of a business director down to sort of your marketing team to know exactly where you're going. Yeah, you can definitely tell the difference between those businesses that are very clear on what their objectives and what their value proposition is, as opposed to those where it's not been quite clearly communicated throughout the company. You tend to end up with quite a few contradicting kind of points and messages, especially when you're communicating with different departments because, well, no one's 100% clear Mm. what it is or why they're doing it, whereas those companies that have very clear defined objectives and they know exactly what their value is they can answer your question straight away everyone is on the same page and you tend to end up with a lot stronger um, messaging especially when you're talking about marketing content yeah that's that's a good point well put yeah thank you yeah (laughs) i guess first of the day (laughs) i guess to get to that point do you need to understand sort of what who your target audience is and what their pain points are yeah, so that's that's obviously part of it. For me, it's really understanding what sets you apart in, in the field that you're in. So why, you know, for us as an example, why should somebody come to seven videos to buy videos from us? Mm. What sets us apart? Um, but also, yeah, it goes deeper than that in that, you know, it's understanding not just why us, but why, but who is our target audience? Who are we, who are we here to serve? Who are, what problems are we solving? What are their pain points? What, what problem is our product or service solving for our target audience? And I think once you get to that stage where you know that, that's yeah. when you get into, as you know, the whole point of this episode is about creating effective video marketing strategies. Only once you know hmm. who it's for and what, problem you're solving yeah that's only when you can start to come up with creating plans i guess yeah a common theme for us is always sort of planning um with everything but i think before that point it's also like researching what what the sort of the pain points are and what your audience needs from a service i think once you've got all these things clear within your minds before you start doing your marketing plan i think you're in a great position to be able to refer back to these things if you do have any sort of questions or you hit sort of a a crossroads in creative decisions you can refer back to these objectives and your your value proposition and you're asking yourself is this achieving what we set out to in the beginning so i think it's a blue it's it's so what we're going through at the moment is literally just a document that's going to be a few pages long that is literally just the blueprint for what all our marketing activities are going to be focused around and i think only then when you know like you say it gives you that thing to refer back to because where we found ourselves at the moment as a business when we've been sort of content planning and and we've not had maybe the focus from the strategic side of things is what we probably should have done 
is we're creating content that isn't necessarily hitting the that solving those problems for our ta target audience. So we're not get, we're not getting the same engagement that we used to get from them. Mm. We're not getting the same level of sort of interest and only when they're aligned is when you really start to see yeah. the, the impact. You probably get to a point where you're like, what, what is the point in doing these if we're not sort of hitting yeah. targets? Yeah. yeah. It's like when we started doing this podcast, you know, the, the whole point of it was to answer questions that our target audience had. So, you know, mm. like, for example, today's episode is about how to create effective video marketing strategies. You know, I think it's fair to assume that, that our target audience, that is going to be a question that they want answering, yeah. which is what we're here to do, I guess. But that was all born out of understanding who our target audience is, what their problems are, mm. and then us creating content around answering what those problems are. Yeah, good point. Simple. I guess the document you alluded to earlier, is that sort of, that's our marketing plan, isn't it? Well, that's kind of the value proposition, but yeah. that's that's the kind of blueprint for, for why, you know, for, for, for why us, I guess moving forwards from that, you then need to create marketing strategies around how you're going to achieve the business objectives essentially. Yeah. And the value proposition is what helps you to get there. Nice. So what do we think are the most important aspects of a marketing plan? What questions do we need to be asking ourselves? So I think it's having a clear, clear objective really to begin with is to what are you looking to achieve over these it's you obviously want to break it down so what are we wanting to achieve in the next year you know again from bringing it back to us a, a, one of our big strategies this year is to get a lot more clients working on a sort of more subscription based model where we create regular video content for them so uh, naturally as a result of that our marketing plan over the next 12 months is to, to is to launch and create a suite of content that's going to support that those activities really so yeah, yeah it's understanding what you're trying to do mm. as a business to then create those strategies around it yeah and i guess it all our sort of marketing collateral at that point all needs to be aligned with that strategy as well just to make sure that it works yeah and sort of it is consistent and all the branding is consistent everything like the, the tone of voice it's so. basically laying out what are the things that you're going to be communicating in order to achieve those things that we talked about initially. Yeah, nice. So what are the benefits of having sort of a, a marketing strategy and a marketing plan, do you think? I mean, for me, it's a way of being able to space things out a little bit and, and make sure that you're putting out the right things at the right time. I think it can be a good way of not trying to achieve everything within one piece of marketing content or a video for example like you could have five different messages that you feel like are important to to communicate for your business if you don't really have a plan of how you're going to lay it out over the over x amount of months you may end up trying to achieve everything within one video one investment for example mm -hmm. and that's where you can run into trouble in terms of you know not really being strong on any of them um so the main thing for me is that you you're ensuring that all your messages and your communications are being achieved, but you're doing it at the right time when people are most likely to want to engage with that kind of content, you know, based on different seasonal things um, that are going on. Um, but I think it, it allows you to be much more strategic and targeted as well, I think. Yeah, you probably get a lot more for your money as well if you plan it out in advance and work out exactly what you need and sort of the different points you need to hit to hit the numbers. So... When we're looking at creating a video marketing strategy, I think bringing it back to the, the content plan we were talking about, it's what what can we be doing to really make ourselves as efficient as possible and to make our budgets and investments go as, as far as possible? Yeah, I think around this time, a lot of people are sort of probably getting their budgets for the next year or they're looking at the budgets for the next year, what they spent previous years. So maybe it's just sort of looking at maximizing your budget, I think, you're going to talk about a point about sort of events and things like that? Yeah, so uh, one of the main things that we've encouraged a lot of clients to do is to, to look at the calendar and see that, you know, when are you going to have all your clients, partners, customers in the same room at the same time? So if you do have any partner events um, that you're putting on or conferences, it's a very good opportunity to be creating video content because you're not having to arrange... Um, a day out of your client's diary everyone's yeah. there in one place so that's where it can be worth sort of engaging with a video agency like ourselves and like we've done with a few of our clients is 
whilst we're also filming the event, but also getting extra content while we're there because mm. it just saves everyone time and money. Yeah, I guess you can get out of an event, you can get highlights, really. You can get testimonials. So week one, you have your highlights. You have your socials are the highlights. You've got your testimonials after that. Interviews, you've probably got content for sort of months to come after that after that event. Yeah, and but, it, you know, it, the events is just one of the, the many things that you, you can do to maximize your investments um i think when you are coming up with a video marketing strategy or a plan it's important to um understand where you'd like to invest and where you can potentially save because i mean let's be honest not everyone's got the budgets to be able to invest large amounts every time right Mm -hmm. so it's looking at what are what would you say that your main communications and messages are going to be for that amount of time maybe investing a little more in that or if it's something that you're wanting to put out a bit more externally um, and you know it needs to have a higher production value that's maybe where you want to invest a little but if you are sort of working internally or there's something that's a little more sort of that can be done either by a virtual filming or, mm. or recordings you know that's where you could maybe save um, and, and when you do speak to any video agencies they will know sort of where to advise on this as well so it's, i think it's important to make the decisions yourselves but also you know seek advice for, from those who, who are in the know brilliant answer thank you jake thank you oh yeah i guess just another point to cover on that is sort of with the planning side of it sort of the, the different tools and things that you've got to actually to plan and use there's lots of lots of free tools i think we use monday.com for all our planning sort of scheduling everything making sure it works I know that Nicole's moved on to using that for her marketing as well, hasn't she? I think, yeah, I think monday.com, like you say, is the one we use. But any kind of project management kind of software or anything like that that you can use where it's sort of interactive, people can comment, you can get people to collaborate on projects, like or anything like that can really, you know, we've noticed a big difference in how we collaborate as a team um, since we started using that mm. because it's such a better way of just visualizing you know we will we'll, so from a content perspective we'll have the next sort of few months planned out you can date everything you can even put landmark you know things yeah. that are specific to our industry or something that's specific to our target audience industry that's what my hands are doing <laughs> but like uh, yeah. yeah you can like you can do something that's very specific for your audience and you then you can then start to create campaigns around that because you know that that's coming up say for us, telecoms we do quite a lot on. It might international telecoms week. We can create a campaign in the lead yeah. up to that and in the follow up to that to to to, to drive leads and uh, and traffic to the website. I think everything's really transparent on a platform like that as well because you can hold everyone accountable. You can sort of get buy in from the different sort of stakeholders and to make sure you're aligned with your strategy. Yeah, and it's been clear like with with that, you know, you can just set tasks, allocate tasks to individuals. It's really clear. You can put time frames. Mm-hmm. Like you say, there's no no excuse. You know, it's all there. In yeah. uh, you know on there to kind of show who's who's leading with it and who, who you should be speaking to about it. Yeah, I guess on tools as well, sort of automating things, sort of setting content up so it goes out at certain times. It's probably a really effective way of dealing with things. Probably teaching everyone to suck eggs here, but yeah. it's it's a really good way of working. I think it's important as well, like within your team, um, to keep reviewing it as well because you can set out a plan for a certain amount of time, but you're going to notice different things and different trends within your industry that may prompt you to bring something forward, change what you're going to communicate at a certain time. Uh, you know, if there's something going on at the time that you didn't anticipate, but it, there may be an opportunity there to, to put some content out. So I think whilst it's important to plan, but keep a, an, an element of flexibility in there so, to allow for those certain things. Hmm. Yeah, agreed. And I think another important element with any kind of plan strategy is is to keep it as simple as possible and i think don't try and do too much we've we do it i mean i say it and we do it all the time <laughs> where you're always like oh yeah like this is our plan for the next few months yeah. and then i'm always like well we can do that we can do that this month we can do that this month and suddenly you've 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 banged everything into the current month that you're yeah. doing and you don't do any of it yeah. so it's, it's some you know we've well, it, certainly within the production department, we kind of bang that drum um, all the time in terms of keeping things as simple yeah. as possible because the more you try to do, the less the quality is in each of those things. So if you, it, you're you a lot better off doing things 
simply but doing them well than trying to do things trying to do something really complicated and, and not really doing it as well yeah um so that that is certainly something that, that we try to to communicate to everyone really i think our most common pushback is probably can you reduce this script because there's far too much in it yeah, exactly yeah. that's a great example oh, yeah but yeah, I think it's like, so again, bring it back to what we're looking to do. We're looking to work with more clients on a retained basis. That should be our number one focus as a business. And our marketing activities over the next three months, or our marketing strategies should be focused on delivering that. So you kind of have to ask yourself, does this fall in line with our main objective and strategy? If it's yes, it goes in there. If it's no, you park it for the next quarter or six mm. months or however regularly you're sort of reviewing it. Have you ever seen any sort of like cohesive like joint campaigns go out at the same time for companies? Does that normally work or is that sort of frowned upon? Um, in what respect? In that could you run two consecutive campaigns for different products at the same time as long as the, the messaging is different? I think it can work. I think it all just depends on the size of the company, size of the audience. If it's like for us, we're quite a small business. You yeah. know, we, we couldn't do too many different things because we just don't have the, 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 the staff, to the capacity it, yeah. to do it. Um, you see a lot of the corporates will run different campaigns. Yeah, big brands, um, a lot of the different different brands. Particularly well. if yeah. they've got different audiences, yeah. um, then mm -hmm. yes. But you don't want to dilute it too much because um, if you're diluting it within the same audience, mm. then you're diluting that message. And the whole thing we're trying to keep it, make sure is the messaging is consistent uh, throughout. So I would opt for a more um, sort of concise sort of, campaign and focusing on one area but yeah. you've only got a certain amount of attention span almost if for want of a better phrase for your your audiences to actually take in the messages that you're putting out if you're trying to do too much in too small amount of time you run the risk of not any of it really sticking yeah i think if we keep banging the drum telling clients we can create you regular video content at a competitive price point and drill that, you know, down over mm. a number of months. That's what we'll get known as. It's very clear, yeah. Whereas if we're one month we're saying we do video case studies, next month say we can help with photography, next month we're event specialists, they'll be like, what are who you? are they? Yeah. What are Confusing, they? Confusing, yeah. Yeah. So, so things like that take time. You know, we did a, where we're, we've worked on a campaign within the telecoms industry, which we do a lot of work in as the kind of go-to telecoms production com video production company now. We've been doing that for about 12, 18 months and probably now we're starting to get a bit, quite a bit more traction from it, but yeah. it doesn't it doesn't happen like that. And mm. I think that's an important point, actually persevering with something. If it's not immediately changing, like, it doesn't mean that it's not going to change in sort of a couple of months. It'll, it will have impact if you keep going with it. Yeah. I think you can almost see through it a little sometimes as well if, you, if you've got a company who's literally claiming that they can do absolutely everything. Yeah. And you're just like, well, can you actually? Because, mm. you know... You know, you you were talking about this thing last week, and now you you know you're talking that you do this in, as well. So it's kind of if you're consistent as well as sort of keeping it simple. I think consistency is key yeah. with with like we've talked about it with messaging, but also with activity as well. Mm. Like you know, we do the podcast, and we try we've got that consistently going out now, sort of once twice a month. Top twenty percent podcast. Top twenty percent yeah. of all time yeah. podcasts <laughs> in in numbers alone, yeah. and um, yeah, I think, but it's been consistent and like you know we, we we're very early into it, and you know we, 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 I think it's fair to say we don't have thousands of viewers and listeners <laughs> just yet. yet. Although this, who knows, this episode yes, could it, pop. Who knows? Yeah, but it's all killer. This, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no filler. <laughs> yeah, but I think. It, you know, if we look back at, at, in two years' time and think, oh, actually, what impact has that had? You know, we've done a lot of events recently, a lot yeah. of event marketing. Um, we did an event a few months back, and now we're starting to see a few quotes and a bit of business come out of the back of that. It's just it's just keeping doing the right activities and being known in the right space. Agreed. So in terms of the, I guess, the, the, the we've done the planning of the videos. We'll skip past the kind of, production of it because we've covered that in lots of other different sort of podcasts so yeah. um when we're looking to sort of distribute the videos and i guess that does come into the planning stage when you're creating the strategies right before you're creating the videos essentially but what thoughts should people be given to how the videos are going to be distributed in terms of how they are creating them i think it's important to know where they're going first of all i think a lot of clients 
especially for like social content, come after you've filmed the video and say, can you turn this into sort of a vertical format, which it's not been filmed in that way, yeah. which makes it very difficult to do that. So knowing that up front will help everything, probably save you a lot of cost as well. There's different things that work better yeah. on certain th- uh, channels, such as Facebook, Instagram, as opposed to things like TikTok, LinkedIn. There are many different ways you can go about it. And mm. I think knowing that before you start planning not, you know, your actual content and how you're going to film it, you can be quite sort of specific in the way that you shoot it. Like you mentioned about a vert being vertical or square or mm. whatever it might be. Um, you know, you can talk about access. What do you think the next shape will be? The Apple's AR glasses, won't it, surely? Oh, yeah. It'll, yeah, it'll, it'll yeah. definitely be some sort of Interactive AI. AI. AR, yeah. yeah. So basically, wherever you're going, you're going to have to film everything just in case someone yeah. wants to look over it. Everything's 360. Yeah. 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 That, that, look that, out for that, that, that doesn't sound irritating <laughs> to have to film at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, you know, you take into account things like accessibility. You know, if, you, yeah. if you're going to be, the video's mainly going to be suited to people viewing on the phones potentially without audio you know do you really want to be having a lot of heavy spoken content in there probably not Mm -hmm. um and it's it's worth doing a bit of research as well in in terms of your your channels that you're going to use you know there's an absolute ton of information out there in terms of you know what channels work best for different things like traditionally facebook has been the highest return on investment for a lot of marketers uh, but sort of going forward, the biggest sort of prediction is that YouTube and Instagram are going to see a mm. lot more growth. I, so. I saw the other day that TikTok is actually a lot cheaper for running ads on than Instagram. Instagram, obviously, Meta is really expensive, but TikTok is probably the the next big thing in advertising. Well, exactly, exactly. I think it's know. already there. Yeah, it? it's already yeah, there. It's... Yeah. All right, granddad. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah. it's you know it's true. Like it, you you your videos will quickly become dated mm. both in terms of content and where you're hosting it yeah um so and then probably more so now than ever before it's really worth taking the time to to be on the beat with trends yeah knowing what the next big thing is and and creating well, your content I, I saw that the next wed- big thing go on you yeah. go and i'll go i mean it's it's all short form video on things like yeah. youtube shorts instagram reels tiktok and i mean the average attention span for a human is... But isn't that already the thing? What, like, what is the next big thing? I, I think it's everything going to be shot on vi- on on phones from now on. I saw like a wedding photographer it's, that purely does it on the phone and they just get stuff for reels yeah. and, and stories and things like that. And so it's just all like... Vertical, yeah, yeah all, think, all vertical. I think we've seen over time, everything has become shorter and snappier and quicker. Mm. I can't tell you what exactly what the platform is going to be, but... The you attention. Have a go. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't think it's going to get to I'm a point to where. De- yeah. I, I didn't know I was going to have to develop an entire app on yeah. this podcast, yeah. by the way. But um, I think, obviously, you can see the fact that everyone's now glued to smartphones, yeah. uh, AR, VR headsets. They're starting to become a bit of a thing. We've mentioned Apple. Yeah. You know, normally when Apple do something, they do it better than everyone else. And yeah. then, you know, that it, it tends to take off so it wouldn't surprise me if we start seeing that whether everyone's ready to actually start with three and a half grand to buy one. well to that and one. actually yeah. if anyone's actually ready to sit like on the tube with a vr headset on watching videos no. i'm not too sure yet yeah. but we've seen how are we feeling about the future i'm, I'm probably going to cover a lot of this next week so i won't go too much into it but yeah. i'm like equally excited and equally dreading it in probably equal measures i would say yeah I mean, imagine sort of working on a spreadsheet, working on a budget with goggles on. <laughs> blinking. <laughs> just blinking at it, yeah. It just, just feels like, awful. Yeah, it's... Um, My eyes are already bad. I feel like, t- like the digital world has developed quite a lot in our lifetime. Yeah. I feel like it's developed so much more in the last six months than probably ever. We're and going to have a little yeah. set, yeah. seven virtual little office. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're hearing more about it now. I think yeah. it's all these things have probably, you know, they've been in production for mm. many years and re, you know the research is probably already been done now for the thing that we don't even know about yet yeah um but yeah i think certainly everything's going to be more short form the accessibility is greater than we've ever seen i think that's only going to increase um another you know the potential is there for you know really useful exciting things but like as you mentioned you know what that can be used for and the impact on um, society, we don't fully know yet. Um, yeah. mm. 
It's a bit of a mystery. So, well, you'll have to, I guess people have to tune in tune to in next, next, time, next yeah. week's when <laughs> Where we'll, we will uh, tell you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll, uh, I'll tell you what the future is. Yeah. And, then, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we'll get the future nailed down. Um, no, I think there's some good stuff in there, chaps. I think the main thing uh, that we sort of just wanted to finish on, which we kind of do with most things, really, but it's all about with any kind of planning strategy, just making sure you're constantly reviewing it, refining it, and just testing what's working, what's not working, bringing it back in line with your business goals, and then going again. Do you think it's important to actually consider this a little bit at the beginning to actually define what what you are going to track and, and what success looks like? We've you know we've mentioned mm. this before, but if you don't know exactly what success looks like for a particular campaign is there really any way of knowing whether it was a success oh no definitely i think yeah you want to be clear of what your metri- your metrics of success are during the the, the the planning of the strategy stage of it really um because like you say that's only when you're going to know uh whether you've achieved it or not so it's understanding what that let's say the objective is and then what the what are the sort of kpis bgis metrics whatever you want to call them what what the important ones are that are going to get you to that and then it's making sure that they're um sort of on track throughout the process and if they're not why not and what can we do to change it review it refine it and Mm. get back to where we need to be you're never going to get it absolutely nailed on first time right so the only way you can actually arrive at that strategy whatever you want to call it that, Mm. that really does work is by having a few goes at it, having a look at what works, what doesn't work, you'll really start to understand your audiences a lot more by doing this as well because you'll see it in front of you the, with the data, you know, yeah. w- what they're engaging with, what they're not. And I think you'll only just gain more information by doing that. Think, um, but yeah. like we've said, it's important to track that so that you can actually look at it and learn from it. Yeah, the only way to know is to try. Well, it's on my wall. Oh, it's another one for the wall, yeah. that. <laughs> For the fridge. Yeah, that's running out the fridge, space. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, awesome. Well, yeah, I think that's pretty much all we've got time for this week. So mm. thanks again, well, Michael. Thank thanks, Jake, for joining me uh, at this week's episode of The Cutting Room. And thanks to you for listening and for watching. I uh, hope you found that useful. Just as a quick recap, we're just going to run through what our seven top tips are on how to create an effective video marketing strategy. So number one is to understand what your business objectives are and where, where you're looking to get to. Number two is to have a clear value proposition and understand what problem that you're solving. Number three, any strategy you do in regards to video marketing needs to be aligned with your marketing plan. Number four, develop a thorough content plan, which includes video marketing within it. Number five, keep it really simple. Number six, have a, have a proper plan for distributing the videos. And finally, number seven, make sure that you review and refine the strategy as you go. So there we go. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Um, for all those that have enjoyed it, don't forget to like, subscribe, rate, follow, whatever other word they use for it. We hope you've enjoyed it and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Oh, it's going to be weird soon. 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 <laughs> soon. <laughs>